welcome back to another week of lessons. If you are new here, I am Miss Rowney. I currently teach in year three in a school in Worcestershire and I upload lessons every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. On Monday we do maths, on Tuesday we do spellings and phonics, on Wednesday we do English, on Thursday we do a follow-up maths lesson and on Friday we do a topic or an art lesson. In today's lesson we are going to be looking at column addition and then on Thursday's lesson we're going to be looking at column subtraction. I try to make these lessons suitable for children aged six and above. So column addition and column subtraction can get a little tricky because sometimes we need to borrow uh, from the next column and we also need to carry over. So the first top tip that I'm going to give you is to always put your hundreds, tens and units at the top. And what I mean by that is to put this. This helps you to understand the value in each column within the number. So for example, if I had 243, I know that I've got two hundreds, four tens, and three units or ones. So when we are doing our column addition and column subtraction, I need you to make sure that you put your hundreds, tens, and units, your H, T, and U, at the top. This way it will help you to get less confused and understand the value in each column. So column addition is where you add two numbers or three numbers or however many numbers you want together but there is a specific method for doing so and this method if you get it right nine times out of ten you get the answer correct. So we are going to start off by just adding two digit number to a two digit number and then as the lesson goes on it will get a little bit more tricky. Now if you are in key stage one or if you are in the lower end of the school, so year one or two, you will be able to pick three digit numbers or four digit numbers to add together. So let's start off by adding two numbers together. The first two numbers that we are gonna add together is 12 and 35. So I'm gonna start off by putting my tens and my units because we know that we've only got two digit numbers. And I'm always gonna put my biggest number on the top. So the biggest number always goes on the top. And this rule is the same with column subtraction. Now, when I'm teaching my class, I always teach them to put the biggest number on top so that we then don't get confused when we're doing column addition or column subtraction. So 35 is our bigger number. And then we are adding, and we need to put the add over here in line with our second number, and we're adding 12. And then we draw two lines. Okay, so we draw one line and then we leave a gap and we draw another line. Right, okay. Now when we are adding them together, we always start in the units column. So we always, 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 always start in the units column. We never, ever, ever start in the hundreds or the tens column always the units column because when we are carrying over a little bit later you will see why if you do start at the hundreds or the tens column you will get confused and it will get a little bit higgledy piggledy we start in the units column five add two is seven well done and then we move over to our tens column so we move over to the column that's next door we don't skip over and if we had a hundreds column go here three add one or the actual value of these numbers here is 30, because we've got it in our tens column, 30 add 10. 30 add 10, or three add one, is four. So your answer is 47. Okay, great, let's do one more together, and then I'm gonna give you a few to do at home before we make things a little bit more tricky. So I've got the next one right on the board behind me. If you'd like to pause the video here to have a go at it, that's absolutely fine. If you need a little bit more help, then just stick with me and I'm gonna go through it. We always start in our units column. So we've got three add five. Three add five is eight. Well done if you got that right. And then we move over to our tens column because we're moving over into the next column. We don't skip a column. The value of this number here is what? What's the value of this number here? 
it's 40 not 4 remember because it's in the tens column so 40 add 10 because remember this is 10 not 1 is 50 but we only put 5 from the 50 because we've already got something in our units column so your answer is 58 if you managed to do that on your own big well done if you've done that with me and you've got the same answer as me fantastic so i'm just going to do one more on the board where we're going to look at carrying over this is when the answer to either the adding in the units column or the adding in the tens column equals a number with two digits so let's have a look at this one together so we've got 76 add 45 off the top of your head, you probably can't do that. If you can, you're very clever and you are much cleverer than me because I can't actually do that from the top of my head. We start in our units column because we always, 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 always start in our units column. Six add five. What is six add five? It is 11, isn't it? Now, we don't write it like this. We don't put 11 like that. Okay, that's not how we do it. We do, however, because we have got now, if we draw 11 over here, look, we've got our units and our tens. So this number here that we have got in our tens column, we need to put him in the basement below. Okay, so we only put... I didn't catch that. Could you try again? We only put the number that is in the units column from our answer. So we've only got a one in our units column. And then this guy here goes underneath in the basement. Okay. So he goes underneath in his correct column, look, because his correct column is the tens column. And we put him in with his friends. Now we move over to the tens column and when we are adding the tens column, we need to add all of the numbers that are in the tens column. There are three numbers in our tens column now. We've got our seven, our four and a one down in the basement. Now we don't want to leave that number one down in the basement because I'm pretty sure he'd get sad and lonely down there. So we need to make sure that we add him on. So remember that these numbers here, the value of these numbers here are 70, 40 and 10. But to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to make them 10 times smaller. So 7 add 4. So 7 add 4 is 11. Good. And then we've got this little guy down here in the basement, remember? So 11 add 1 is 12. Now... Now, let me, let me show you how to write that down. It is 12, but then we need to make it 10 times bigger. So what is the number if we make 12 10 times bigger? It is 120. Now, if I wrote 120 down here like this for you, look, we've got a new hundreds column, tens and units. So I'm going to add on my hundreds column up here now looking at 120 how many have we got in our tens column we've got the two so we've got 20 in our tens column and then we need to add something into our new hundreds column how many have we got in our hundreds column over here look for 120 we've got to put the one so your answer is 121. Now, a rule to remember that if you haven't got anything in your hundreds column, you don't need to put the one down there in the basement. Let me give you a few to do. So I'm going to split the board up into level one, level two, and then level three is going to be over there. If you want more challenging questions, go for level three. If you feel okay with it, and you're okay with this carrying over, then go for level two. If you're just starting out and this is something completely new to you, just try level one. And if you feel confident enough, then you can go on to level two. I always say in these lessons, it's totally up to you to challenge yourself at home. Okay, here are the questions for you to have a go at answering at home. Challenge yourself to as far as you can go and join me back in just a second to go through them. So let's have a go at going through a few of these. So I'm going to start with these questions and then move along. So 73 add 14. The first thing I'm going to do is add my tens and my units. Biggest number needs to go on top. So 73 add 
14, draw my two lines. There we go, always starting in my units column. Three add four is seven. Seven add one is eight. So your answer is 87. Well done if you got that right. And then we're gonna go down here. So we're gonna start with my tens and my units. My biggest number is 27. So that's gonna go on the top, 27. Don't forget to put the add down there so you know exactly what you're doing. Add 12, doing my two lines. Start in my units column. Seven, add two is nine. Two, add one or 20, add 10 is 30. So your answer is 39. Well done if you got those right. Let's go to the middle. And do the same principle, put the tens and my units. Biggest number out of those two numbers is 87. Don't forget to put your add. And then 19 is your next number. Now I can already see that we're gonna to need to do some carrying over. So hopefully you've remembered how to do that. Units column, seven, add nine. Seven, add nine is 16. Well done, so remember to only put the number that's in the units column, so that's six. And then we carry over that 10 from 16 into our tens column. Now we've got eight, add one. Eight, add one is nine. Then we need to add this guy in the basement, otherwise he's gonna get very sad and lonely down there. So we've got 10. Now, it's actually 100, isn't it? So 80, add 10, is 90. Add another 10, is 100. So I need to add on a hundreds column because we've now jumped up an extra digit. And then we put the one from the 100, and then we've got zero tens because there are zero tens in 100. If we wrote 100 out, then we put our hundreds, tens, and units, we've got zero in our units column, zero in our tens, and then we've got a one in our hundreds column. Let's move on to this one down here. Oh, look, we've got a three digit number here. So we've got our hundreds, tens, and our units. And then we put 561 on the top. Why do we put 561 on the top? Because it's our biggest number, well done. And then we've got, ooh, 47. Now I'm just gonna put my tens and my units on there so I know exactly how to lay this out in my column edition because we don't wanna be putting the 47 like this because that would then mean that it's 470. So I need to look at my units. So I need to put the seven in the units column and then four in my tens column for 47. So now I need to go to my units column because we always start at the units column. One add seven is eight, well done. Oh, okay, right, 60 add 40, we'll make it 10 times smaller. Six add four is, oh, it's 10. So it's 10, but then we need to make it 10 times bigger. Okay, so 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm just gonna write my answer over here, 100. I'm gonna put my hundreds, tens and units. Right, okay, let's put this properly. Okay, so in my units column, I don't have to put anything. In my tens column, I need to put a zero. Done. And then in my hundreds column, I need to carry over a one because we've got already got something in our hundreds column. Okay, five add nothing, five. Add one is six. So the value in our hundreds column is six, so it's 608. Let's move over to our third column. Now over here we are beginning to look at thousands, so we are beginning to look at four digit numbers. Which is the biggest number out of 3,794 and 5,224? Good, 5,224. Now I need to put my thousands, my hundreds, my tens and my units column now. This is even more important when you are adding bigger numbers together so that you can lay out correctly so that you know exactly the value in each column. 5,000, 
224 goes on the top. Then we need to put our ad, 3,794. There we go, look at that. Okay, always starting at our units column. So four add four is eight, well done. Tens column, two add nine. Two add nine is 11, good. So we put the one in there, carry over into the hundreds column because it's actually 110, isn't it, the answer? Because we need to make it 10 times bigger. Okay, now we move to our hundreds column. Two add seven is nine. Add the one down here is 10. So the way that we put, we lay that out, we put the zero and then we carry one over. Okay, thousands column, 5,000, because that's the value of that number there, 5,000, add 3,000 is 8,000, add another 1,000 is 9,000. So there's your answer, 9,018. Wow, that was tricky, wasn't it? That's a lot of carrying over. Okay, down here, we've got 7,943, add... 5,615. Which one goes on the top? Which one is the biggest number? Good, 7,943. So remember to put your thousands, your hundreds, tens and units. Make sure you lay it out correctly. 7,943. Add... 5,615. Right, let's add this together then. Units column, we always start in our units column. So three add five is eight, easy peasy. Tens column, 40 add 10 or four add one is five, 450. Okay, hundreds column, 900 add 600 or nine add six is 15, so there we go, and then carry the one over, because we've got a two digit number for our answer. 7,000, add 5,000, then we need to add this little guy that's down in the basement. Good, is 13. Wowzers, trousers, look at that answer. 13,558, that is a huge number. Well done if you got that right. Well done if you got any of those questions right, you are doing really well. So just like the previous lessons, I am going to insert a sheet for you to try just here. If you would like the more challenging questions, the more challenging questions are in sections B and C. If you are just starting out with this, I advise just doing section A and working your way up to that. The answers to these questions here will be in Thursday's lesson, so make sure that you join me for that lesson too. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you tomorrow for spellings and phonics.